design lovers, I'm Ashley Childers and I'm so excited about today's video because I am sharing my top 15 tips for a luxury designer look. Y'all, these are my tried and true tricks for getting a sophisticated, beautiful look in your home. So you're going to want to stick around for every single one of them. I know you're gonna love today's video, so make sure that you hit the subscribe button because we drop a new video packed full of design goodness every Saturday. Let's dive into tip number one, and that is architectural moldings and paneling. I've spoken about architectural moldings and panelings in previous videos, and y'all know that I am a huge fan of architectural moldings, panelings, and beams in your home. These details add instant character and depth to your room and are my go-to trick for getting a high-end look. If you are a DIYer, many of these decorative moldings and wall panels can be applied yourself. And if not, just hire a skilled carpenter. They can achieve the look that you want easily and affordably. My favorites include raised picture molding, tongue and groove paneling on walls, stacked base molding, cove crown molding, and feature ceiling beams. All of these applied architectural moldings will give instant character and depth to a room and something that you might want to consider if you are looking for a little upgrade to your home. On to tip number two for a designer look and that is Lux lighting. Y'all, this is a big one and I dedicated an entire video to lighting last week. So you are going to want to check that out. I'll link it at the end of this video today. There's so many things to consider when you are choosing lighting for your home. Chandeliers, pendants, sconces, table lamps. There just is a really broad range of beautiful decorative lighting that you can use to elevate the look of your home. So make sure you check out the video that we did because I think you will find it so helpful. A few designer tips when it comes to Lux lighting is to be mindful of the scale of the fixture and the color temperature that it emits. So let me go into both of those. For scale, many times we see chandeliers that are too small, sconces that are hung at an improper height or table lamps that are just the wrong size for a table. So you really want to be mindful when you are looking at the scale of a piece that you're going to install in your home. I would say generally go bigger because most of the time that gives us a more designer look when we have a little bit more of an overscaled piece. As for color temperature, this is a big one. You want to make sure that all of the fixtures in a room create the same color temperature in light. So that means you don't wanna have a lamp on a table that the bulb emits a cool blue light where in the same room you have a chandelier that emits a warm light. This is an easy fix. Just make sure that all of the bulbs in a room are the same temperature. And when you are looking at LED fixtures, this is something really to think about because there's a huge color range when it comes to the light output of an LED fixture. I always lean towards anywhere between 2700 and 3000 Kelvin. Kelvin is the temperature range of an LED light. So if you are choosing fixtures that have a range of 2700 to 3000 Kelvin, they are going to be a warm light and they're going to marry really well with your lamps that have maybe incandescent bulbs. Lighting can be super technical. So we actually created a comprehensive free lighting guide for all of our viewers and I am going to link it below. It's actually just really, really helpful and informative on how to choose the right fixture for your space, size and scale, how to hang chandeliers and pendants properly, the proper height to hang a sconce and even how to scale table lamps and how to choose a shade. So I will link it below in the description and enjoy. Okay, on to luxury design secret number three, and that is overscale mirrors and art. This tip can really make a huge impact on a room, easily and affordably. So when you are shopping for mirrors and artwork for your home, I want you to think about going a little bit larger than you normally would. This is gonna give you a higher end look and give you so much bang for your buck. Mirrors and artwork really set the tone for a room and can be a jumping off point for your entire scheme. 
Tip number four is adding window treatments. Window treatments soften a space and immediately add a cozy layer to a room. If you are wanting to add full panel drapes to your home, we suggest going all the way up to the ceiling or crown molding with the drapery rods. This gives the drapery an elevated high-end look and will also make your ceilings look taller. Also, think about adding cafe curtains or Roman shades to your space. These pretty little window treatments are beautiful and functional and will create a welcoming layer in your home. Tip number five for a high-end designer look is artful door and cabinet hardware. The interior hardware is sometimes an afterthought in a home, but it is so important when setting the tone of your rooms. I often hear people say that they just want to go with the least expensive option when it comes to hardware, but friends, that is not always the best decision. Let's go through a couple of my designer tips on how to pick the best hardware for your home. First of all, let's think about how many times every single day you come into contact with the interior hardware in your home, be it doorknobs or cabinet pulls or drawer pulls, you are literally touching these items. So it is so important that you choose hardware that is solid and well-made and will stand the test of time. So I wanna share a couple of my very favorite hardware brands with you. I love brands like Baldwin, Rocky Mountain Hardware, M-Tech, Armac Martin, and even Top Knobs if you are looking for a budget-friendly option. Before we move on to tip number six, I wanna hear from you. Which one of my luxury designer tips that we've gone over so far is your favorite and which one do you want to try to use in your home this year? Now let's dive in to luxury designer tip number six and that is large scale rugs. There are few other things more impactful than a beautiful large scale rug to to add color and depth to a room. We see improperly scaled rugs all the time, so this tip had to make my list. I wanna to talk to you about how to scale a rug properly for different spaces in your home. So when you are looking at a rug, for say a living room or a family room where you're gonna have a seating grouping, you need to make sure that the rug is large enough to have all of the seating elements in a room on top of it. At the very least, the front legs of a chair or sofa need to be on the rug. I prefer, honestly, for all of the legs of chairs and sofas to be on a rug. So the bigger the better in this instance. When we are looking at a rug for underneath a dining table, whether it is in a dining room or in a kitchen, we're going to want to make sure and choose a rug that is large enough so that all of the dining chairs around the table can sit comfortably on top of the rug when they are pulled out and someone is sitting in them. You do not want two legs on the rug and the back two legs off the rug. You are going to end up with a rocking chair and not the good kind. Okay, I'm just just gonna go ahead and say this one. We see this happen all the time as well. When you are choosing a runner for your kitchen, friends, ooh, we don't wanna go dinky. No dinky runners in our kitchens. If you measure the width of the space that you want to place your runner, and let's say it's four and a half feet, or even five feet, mine is five foot in my kitchen, don't put a runner there that is two feet wide. It is literally going to look like a landing strip. You want to go bigger in this instance. I always like to shop for runners that are at least three and a half feet wide. And if your space is smaller, then that's okay. Find a rug that fits. You just wanna make sure that you don't have a ton of extra flooring on either side of the rug when you're placing it between cabinetry and a kitchen because it's honestly just not gonna give you a designer look. Moving on to luxury tip number seven, and that is mixing antique and vintage pieces into your decor. This is honestly probably my very favorite tip of all because I love the character that adding vintage decorative accessories and beautiful antique furniture into a room creates. Mixing in pieces with history and soul not only elevate your space, but they also keep your home from looking like a furniture showroom. A few of my go-tos for a layered welcoming look are incorporating antique handmade ceramics, 
vintage lamps, antique mirrors and art, and vintage handmade rugs. These elements will add a layer of interest and history to your room, and as a bonus, they are honestly so fun to shop for. Okay, moving on to my eighth luxury designer secret that will instantly elevate your room, and that is collection groupings. This tip goes hand in hand with tip number seven of adding in vintage and antique accessories because so often when we have a collection of something, it is an antique treasure. So my tip for displaying these items is go bold and group them together in a collection for an artful arrangement. This could be on a wall if your collection is art. I am a huge sucker for an antique art grid for sure. Tip number nine for achieving a high-end designer look is using a tonal color palette. This is something that I spoke to on our previous design trends and paint trends videos, but it is worth mentioning again because it's a really easy way to get a sophisticated look in your home. When you are choosing paint and furniture and decorative accessories for your space, focus in on using a range of tones within one color palette. This creates a high-end look while still giving you depth and interest in your space. Number 10 in our luxury design secrets is layering luxe textiles. This tip is all about the throw pillows and throw blankets that you decorate your space with. And I have a few designer tips to help you choose beautiful pillows and throws. First, you're going to want to layer in different textures and patterns and sizes when you are choosing throw pillows for your home. Many times in our clients' homes, when we don't want to add a pattern to the throw pillows on say a sofa or a chair, we will oftentimes mix different textures in a space. So this could mean a beautiful mohair paired with a boucle or a suede or even sometimes a really gorgeous woven texture. We love to add interest and depth through mixing different textures and you don't have to always add in a pattern to create interest. And if we are incorporating patterns into a space, we like to opt for a really beautiful kind of structural pattern like a stripe paired with maybe a more whimsical large floral and then a smaller scale pattern. This creates interest and we just love the mix of the different patterns also too always we mix in a texture as well. And when you are thinking about the size of pillows, let's say for a sofa, we like to opt for a large 22 inch pillow at the back, pair that with let's say maybe a 14 by 20 lumbar in front of it. And then on the other side of the sofa, we like to do a 20 inch square. This just gives us some visual interest to your space and we really like that layered look. Last pro tip when it comes to pillows, listen guys, this is really, really important. If you can, always opt for really overstuffed down inserts. There is nothing worse than a flat, pancake pillow on a sofa. That is not the look we are going for. So I always like to choose an insert that is usually anywhere between two and four inches larger than the actual pillow because it's going to give you that luxe overstuffed look. And if you can have down inserts in your home, I highly recommend that because they are beautiful and super soft. For throw blankets, I always like to opt for natural fibers instead of, let's say, acrylic weaves. Cotton or linen or even wool throw blankets are going to be more luxurious and they are also going to hold up to the daily wear and tear of your home. So when you are shopping for a beautiful, cozy throw blanket for your room, make sure that you are looking for natural fibers. Number 11 in our luxury designer tips to create a high-end look in your home is incorporating natural plants and flowers into your rooms. This tip is so easy to achieve, y'all. Next time that you're at the grocery store, just grab a handful of tulips or clip some branches from your yard or even add a little lacy fern in your space. 
all of these really beautiful natural plant materials and flowers are going to just liven up your space. And honestly, having live plants and flowers in your space is a natural mood booster. So I highly recommend this tip. It's easy, affordable, and something that you should treat yourself to every week. Moving on to tip number 12 for a designer experience in your home, that is signature fragrance. This one is so often overlooked, but having your home filled with beautiful fragrance is just as important as any other design element that we've spoken about. Scent evokes memories like nothing else, and the way that your home smells not only affects you and your mood, but is oftentimes the very first thing that a visitor will experience when they walk into your home. So my suggestion is find a scent for each season that optimizes the experience that you want to create in your home and then layer in that fragrance throughout your rooms with candles, diffusers, and room sprays. There are honestly so many amazing home fragrance products out there, so I'm actually going to link a couple of my very favorites below in the description so you can check them out and create an incredible home fragrance experience in your own spaces. Okay guys, there are only three more tips that I wanna share with you to create a luxury designer experience experience in your home. So stay with me because they are all so good. The next two honestly go hand in hand. So here they are, number 13 and number 14, and that is cutting the clutter and curated styling. I want you to think of both of these tips in tandem when you are decorating your home. First of all, cutting the clutter is so important. It will instantly elevate your home and also Put the focus on the furniture and decorative accessories that you really love and that you want to be a focal point in your space. When we clear the clutter, we create a more thoughtful, well-designed and sophisticated space. As a follow-up to cutting the clutter, tip number 14 is curated styling. Now let me explain. I really want you to be creative and play around when you are styling your rooms. Creating visual harmony with how you group objects into vignettes and always keeping those four design principles that I speak to so often top of mind of interest, scale, repetition, and movement. Also created several videos focused solely on styling your space, so you might wanna check those out after this video is done. Okay, here we are, number 15, in the top tips to create a luxury look at your home, and this one, we're actually going outside and we are talking about curb appeal. The easiest and least expensive way to add curb appeal to your home is through creating a welcoming entry by adding abundant potted plants, a beautiful wreath, and a sophisticated doormat, you can really add to your home's curb appeal and create a welcoming and beautiful entry. My second tip is to make sure that your exterior architectural details are scaled properly for your home. This is a big one for me, guys, so let me explain further. Let's just go ahead and get the cat out of the bag and talk about shutters. So when we are adding shutters to our home, we want to make sure that they are scaled properly for our windows. I am honestly always shocked when I see a really beautiful home with shutters that are not scaled properly because this is an element of your home that you can get right, it's really easy. So for instance, if you have a window and you want to flank that window on each side with shutters, then those two shutters need to both be half of the width of the total window so they look like they are actually usable, like you could close them up and cover the entire window. Also, a lot of times we install shutters where there's only one because it's maybe a single smaller window. So in this instance, if there's only one shutter off to one side, you want to make sure that that shutter is the entire size of the window and is scaled appropriately. Guys, I cannot stress this one enough. Properly scaled shutters will make all the difference for your home's curb appeal. So you really wanna be mindful when you are adding shutters to your home. One more thing about shutters, just go ahead and add 
hinges and shutter dogs, even if these elements are purely decorative. Shutters are not meant to be screwed directly to your home's exterior. So by adding hinges and shutter dogs, even if your shutters are going to be stationary, you are going to create a more timeless, authentic look. Okay, friends, who is ready to dive headfirst into the 15 luxury design trends and get our home looking best for this coming year. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and let me know below in the comments which one or multiple of the 15 tips that I shared is your favorite and which one you will be leaning into when you decorate your home. And if you love all things design, check us out on Instagram and TikTok at Ashley Childers Home for a little sneak peek into my daily life as a designer. Now, if you want more designer styling tips right now, you're going to want to check out this playlist next. As always, I'm Ashley Childers. Thank you for watching and remember, good design is for everyone. So create a home that inspires you, have fun decorating your space, and fall in love with where you live one room at a time.